DreamWorks, the animated studio that has made every kid's childhood through their classics like Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, and more. But did you know they've made Christmas specials? After finding out about this, I dug deep and decided to watch all of them. So in today's video, I'm going to be your okay. tour guide for these four classic DreamWorks specials, and stay tuned till the end of the video because I'll be ranking all four of these from worst to best. So without further ado, everybody, let's explore the weird world of DreamWorks Christmas specials. The first special I'm going to be diving into today is the Shrek Christmas special. This one has a special place in my heart because my family and I have watched this so many times. It's a family tradition at this point. The short opens up with that classic DreamWorks theme, which is just chef's kiss. And like every kid born in the 2000s, this kid chilling on the moon was all we aspired to be when we were younger. Away from the mess that is the world. Just peacefully chilling on the moon. Now I know why Gru wanted to steal it so bad. So the short opens up with Donkey just hounding Shrek about Christmas. <laughs> and Shrek lets him know that he, for one, does not care about Christmas. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. You got everything ready? No. You mean you haven't trimmed your stockings or hung your chestnuts or, or roasted the tree? No. Or figure pad your put Donkey, will you get it through your thick head? No one here gives a hoot about Christmas. <laughs> a white Christmas. Oh, how perfect. And it's our first one together as a family. Unfortunately for Shrek, Fiona loves Christmas. I mean, who doesn't? and makes a promise that he's got a surprise waiting for her, and alas, we are thrown into the main premise of the short. Shrek climbs mountaintops, fights blizzards, and journeys to the local village just to learn how to make a Christmas better for Fiona, since he's been a homebody his whole life, and he hasn't celebrated a Christmas ever. So, Shrek meets this perky blonde girl, and she gets to telling him how to deal with his Christmas dilemma. I know all about Christmas, and I have just the book for you. Christmas for village idiots. It's all spelled out, see? Step one, decorate the house. Step two, the stockings by the fireplace. Step three, the Christmas fees. Let me just say, the accuracy of a perky blonde girl selling the idea of Christmas is fitting. They can teach you all the ways of tying a ribbon around a Christmas tree, but if you ask them where they want to eat, they go black bolt, and suddenly they can't speak. So the next day, Fiona is woken up by Shrek putting some solid decorations up on the house. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. It's horrible! Oh, donkey! You know, they usually just toilet paper and run away, but whoever did this means business! I still can't get over how good Eddie Murphy is as Donkey. Dude's arguably the best part of Shrek, in my opinion. Other than Puss in Boots, of course. So Shrek is still trying to make the best possible Christmas for his family when Donkey bursts through the door with the whole Shrek squadron and the GOAT Puss in Boots. Okay, I will assume the position. Hey yo, Puss, what's going on here, my guy? So Shrek decides to give the party a try and make the most of the night since that's what Fiona wants. But for most of the short, it's just Shrek getting more and more annoyed with all of the people interrupting his family Christmas until finally he lets the whole crew know his thoughts. But after kicking everyone out, Fiona gets the wisest of ideas that it's Shrek's fault for ruining Christmas? I mean, homie got lit on fire and she's blaming him? Crazy world we live in. So, like a true MVP, Shrek puts the blame on himself and apologizes to the crew for his devious actions. I'm sorry you took getting kicked out of my house the wrong way. Shrek admits he's never celebrated Christmas before and gets the whole crew to come back to his place for a nice Christmas evening story. And the Shrek short concludes with Santa flying overhead, leaving the gingerbread man in fear. This short is really cute. As a huge fan of Shrek 1 and 2, I feel like this short falls right in that vein, even though this came out after Shrek 3. The short is simple but effective, like all of the Shrek stories themselves. It takes a story we've seen before and brings a new spin on it. The voice acting is awesome, and I love the Shrek animation to death, plus it's got some really funny parts. No wonder homie was so scared of Santa. This shit is nightmare fuel. Up next, we have Merry Madagascar, the Madagascar Christmas special. Now, I've never seen this one, or if I have, it is very faint, and I don't remember much about it. So, this experience is gonna hit me for the first time. Those are usually the best times, am I right? <clears throat> okay, so the short opens up with the gang boarding a not-so-safe-looking DIY hot air balloon, hoping to travel back to New York, where their zoo is located. Now, I'm no engineer, but a hot air balloon called Bust ain't a good omen if you want to travel thousands of miles. What I say? I hate to say I told you so, but uh, I told you so. Anyways, the person who shot down the balloon was Julian, and he lets them know why they were shot down. Every year. On the 24th of Juliannuary. Juliannuary? It's a festive holiday named after His Majesty. 
It starts with a red glow. Then the air fills with the goblin's horrible, mocking laughter. Then he pelts us with hundreds of black rocks. After Alex hits the goblin like a motherfucking sharpshooter, a LeBron James down 20 in the fourth with three minutes left, type B, the goblin turns out to be Santa? But because of Alex's insane accuracy, Santa's fall gave him amnesia getting that Harry Osborn and Spider-Man 3 type treatment. So, to get back to New York, the gang hatcher planned to deliver all of Santa's presents in exchange for getting dropped off in New York at the zoo. But when meeting the reindeer, the top tier squad arrive. And by that, I mean the penguins of Madagascar. We meet again, South Polars, North Polars. Oh, okay, you guys know each other or something? It's a cold war that dates back centuries. You see, Santa used to be based in the South Pole. Oh, this again? Santa chose North Pole, fair and square. Oh, please. They bribed him with candy canes and cheap elf labor. Penguins then used the reindeer's magical fairy dust, in other words, cocaine, to fly the sleigh and take the rest of the gang with them in order to deliver Santa's presents. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh -oh. Hey, you know the gang is from New York when the first thing they do off rip is setting off alarms. Can't trust anyone from New York besides Spider-Man for real. So after accidentally running into a kid who's awake during one of their drop-offs, the gang make it a mission to deliver all of the gifts to each and every kid that night. So in a fun little montage, the gang deliver a bunch of presents to different cities around the world. While the gang do this, the B-plot finds Santa figuring out who he is again and influencing Julian about the power of giving. Here, yeah, Amelia. Very Julian, you. <gasps> Look at that smile on Amelia. Ooh, making her feel good makes me feel good. Trust me, Julian. It feels good now, but when she's begging for 24 karat jewelry and about to take half your net worth, you'll be feeling different. But with enough flight juice to get them to Madagascar, the gang go back to get Santa and his reindeer. Terrible crisis, Santa. The South Polar stole sleigh for joyride. Now, Christmas is ruined. What? That's an outright Christmas lie with all the trimming. Yeah, Christmas isn't ruined. We delivered everything. It's the truth. Santa, the South Polar saved Christmas. Cupid, stay out of this. I grow tired of your reindeer games. We want to be bipolar. Probably the most accurate thing any girl has ever said. Unfortunately, after everything, Santa yeets the sleigh and leaves the gang stuck in Madagascar to spend Christmas there. They make the most of it, and the short ends with them in Madagascar enjoying Christmas. There's something about DreamWorks movies that always make me laugh. Maybe it's because the humor is just now catching up to me, but they always have hidden adult jokes sprinkled throughout their shorts and movies that just hit so hard. Especially with the Penguins of Madagascar. These guys are elite. I love them so much. This short is amazing. Honestly, I liked it a lot. It's cute, the animation is top tier, voice acting talent is great, and I love the humor. Up next is the How to Train Your Dragon Christmas special. I had never seen this one actually before, so it was an interesting watch all around. It opens up with Toothless and Hiccup flying around, and my god, the How to Train Your Dragon theme is insanely good. Just listen to this. So in this world, they don't celebrate Christmas per se, but to make it easier on my brain, I'm just gonna call it Christmas. Thank you. While decorating the town for Christmas, every single dragon from the town gets up and leaves, just straight vanishes, even toothless. That's rough, buddy. While Hiccup is missing his dragon, his father hits him with some wise ass words that had me double taking the writing here. <sighs> Listen, I know what it's like to miss someone you love this time of year. But what do we do when they can't be here for the holiday? We celebrate them. Damn! This shit got me tearing up, man. So Hiccup inadvertently lets loose a dragon and rides it to where all the dragons are staying since leaving. You guys come here to have babies. That's a wild thing to hear out of context. Anyways, back on the island, the B group found the dragon that Hiccup took eggs. And as a new tradition, they sprinkled them around the town. But unfortunately, when the eggs hatch, they explode. So back on the island, the Vikings have a PTSD-induced trip when all of the dragon eggs explode on hatch. Honestly, understand. If I randomly woke up to my house exploding, I'd be oh freaking out too. Anyways, Hiccup returns with all of the dragons and their babies, reuniting with Toothless. Toothless! Hey, bud! 
Anytime I see a clip of these two, I get emotional, man. Like, look at Toothless. He needs a hug for real. These two just encapsulate the pet owner relationship so well. It makes me want to wrap my arms around my cat and give her just a massive hug. Lastly, Hiccup and Toothless go on a holiday flight to end the short. I have to say, I love this one. I feel like it added to the lore really well by giving the dragons more development. This takes place between the first and second movies, so seeing that they traditionally go to this place to have their kids was pretty cool. I also love this world and the vibe the holiday brings to the Viking environment, and I'd really recommend this one to anyone who hasn't seen it in full. Similarly to the How to Train Your Dragon short, I didn't know DreamWorks made a Kung Fu Panda short. <laughs> so to round out the video, we're going to be diving into the Kung Fu Panda Holiday Special. Opening up into the short, Master Shifu, the GOAT, gives Poe the info that he's going to be hosting the Winter Festival for all the Kung Fu Masters, which in turn makes his father upset because this time of year he wants to spend it with just Poe as a family. How sweet. Get the fuck over it. Homeboy gotta kick some ass. I'm hosting. Everyone think I can't do sophisticated. Hey, yo, this is a crazy position, Bo. Ew! So while figuring out what he needs to do for the party, Shifu tells him he can't bring his dad. But with an intellect rivaled only by Einstein, Poe issues the golden ladle to his dad so he can make food for the feast. What is it? Tomorrow night. Oh, that's all important. What? So without a chef, Poe must cook the meal entirely alone, and I just know the Kung Fu Master's gonna be eaten with tears streaming down their face. So in this crazy montage, we see Poe losing his mind trying to deal with everything. I have to say, this short has some really cool animated moments, like the opening sequence being in 2D and this little montage here. Really, really creative stuff. Anyways, Poe gets his Kung Fu team to help him set up with the party. Yellow tape around his body. Because they have the wrong flakes for the dinner, Poe goes down to the town to get the proper ones. But while he's there, he realizes how much he misses the small family moments for his holiday, and lets the Kung Fu Masters know what he's feeling. Every feast, my dad and I spend all day cooking together, and the whole neighborhood shows up. I wish I could stay and be a good host, but I think I need to leave and be a good son. So Poe and his dad make food for all the guests at the restaurant, including the masters, who have foregone tradition, like real homies, some would say. But when Shifu pulls up, he drops one of the coldest bars known to man. What goes on in your head, I really don't always understand. But what goes on in your heart will never let us down. I'm gonna hang that up on my wall. And the short ends with the whole kung fu group getting a proper family photo together. This short was really, really awesome. I'd say it's the best animated one out of the group with the coolest and unique parts to it. Voice acting is amazing, and I really liked the small but very concise story that it had. Now, I know you've all been waiting for this moment where I give you my final ranking of all these shorts from worst to best. So as an early Christmas gift to you, here's how I'd rank these four Christmas shorts. At number four, we got Mary Madagascar. At number three, we got the gifts of fury at number two we have kung fu panda holiday special and number one shrek the halls i don't dislike any of the four i watched and showed you here today but the top two are definitely ones i'd rewatch again in the years to come there's something so special about watching christmas related media during the holidays and nothing i mean nothing ever tops it for me christmas time is a very special time of year to be with family and do a bunch of fun things and it always excites me every year i can't wait for you all to have a wonderful christmas as well i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did, hit that like button and watch another video right here. I wish you all a great holiday, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. What kind of landing was that? Any landing you can walk away from is a good landing.